Welcome to Off Record On Point, the digital voice podcast unzipped. On today's episode, we'll be discussing the secret to being your authentic self. Rip off that mask with our special guest, Jack Ellis. This podcast will be brought to you every month by me, your host, Julia Linehan, founder and MD of The Digital Voice, and I'm always joined by my lovely co-host, Casey Long. Thank you so much, Julia. Very excited to be here. And when we say unzipped, we mean it. We're covering a bit of industry gossip, but more importantly, for the people that make it happen, when we say off the record, we mean it. We're unzipping sensitive issues and some hard to talk about topics. So if anything provokes any feelings, we've got a list of resources and links attached in the description for you. our very first guest. He is very special. This is going to be a very unique session. Jack Ellis from Yahoo. I want you to introduce yourself to the listeners. The who, the where, the why, the how. Tell us all. Thank you very much. It's absolutely awesome to be here. appreciate you having me on. Episode one as well adds quite a degree of pressure. Mm -hmm. You're Um, special. I've been told I'm special in the past. I'm not sure it's always been a compliment. I'm Jack. I'm 39, be 40 in March. Um, I still don't feel like it. I still feel like 14 year old. And I work at Yahoo, coming up to a year. I've been in advertising for the past 20 years, fell into various other jobs, and eventually into advertising by accident and have loved it ever since. We love that. I mean, I'm, I'm also a big fan of this industry and a long term veteran mm. in it. So it's always good to hear that love for it. <laughs> I know I don't like to say how long. Joined as well. I'm delighted to have Casey Long, my co host, here. Say hello, Casey. Hello, hello. Thank you. So, Casey and I, when we were talking about this session and when we knew we had you joining us, Jack, we were looking at what do we want this session to really go into? This is the secret to, you know, of being your authentic self, ripping off that mask. So I want to start with a really broad question. How have you embraced living your most authentic Mm. life? It all started three years ago when I was diagnosed with ADHD. That is simply the answer to that question. I think that the short story, I think the long story of that is I've been trying to find out why my brain didn't seem to function like everyone else is in the room and why I kept getting episodes of anxiety, mental health. And I just never got the answer, talking to doctors, to people of faith, people of spirituality, whatever it might be, I would try and find an answer and never got it. But uh, being diagnosed gave me the clarity, the right medication, help I needed to finally know why all those noises and voices in my head are slightly different to usually to the room. That's just helped me to understand myself. And when I think when you really understand yourself truly, you can then start putting the right foot forward in, in how you can address your life and be authentic. That's a really interesting answer, Jack. Thank you. So it sounded like there was a lot of highs and lows that you had there. You know, you talk about spirituality, talk us through Mm. that and maybe share a little bit on how our listeners can climb back into a positive headspace if they're experiencing those lows. Yeah, sure. I mean, hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? And I think now I can see it sort of when you get a diagnosis, quite often when I talk to other people who have been diagnosed with various neurodiverse conditions, it feels like they can look back at their life through a certain lens and sort of things start to make sense. The highs and lows I'm talking about are I mean, growing, growing up in a single parent family had its challenges anyway. Um, there was a lot of exposure to drugs and sex and addictions and suicide and really heavy stuff that when I was really little, wow. um, all the way through my formative years. So and I used to think it was because of the nature that was why I was damaged, if you like. But actually, looking back now, quite a lot of it was nurture the way my brain was. Actually, I think I've got that the wrong way around. But I think necessarily the way I was nurtured, just go through episodes of tried faith i tried medication i tried meditation i tried i tried various <laughs> avenues to try and get answers and i think that's yeah. synonymous with a lot of people like myself until they finally got the answer they need about 10 years ago so still way before diagnosis and understanding yet another episode couldn't carry on and that began i suppose the process of going through uh, cbt and antidepressants but it's still i was in and out of episodes because of course that's not what i needed which we know now. And then finally, three years ago, huge mental health crisis, panic attacks every day for a week. Um, couldn't get out of bed, couldn't go to work. And that's it. I decided that's it. That was the sort of breaking yeah. point. 
It really was. And I think we need to get to a point, really, where we, people aren't getting to crisis before they can get this help. Yeah. yeah. Where are you at now, Jack? How do you champion your neurodiversity? You're really comfortable talking about it, which is fantastic. That championing is part of that, is the branding thing. I think others have told me I'm a champion. Others have told me I'm an ambassador. Others have told me, you know, you're really good at speaking out. All I'm doing, it really, is just like, speaking out about how, what, why it means so much to me. I'm not really putting much effort behind it. It's just so natural. It flows out of me like clear water. Whether I talk to one person in the pub or a coffee shop or on a podcast or a webinar or a panel, it, somebody ends up reaching out and going, oh, God, I didn't know Make this. We did a vision. series of videos last October. Yeah, and somebody yeah. came and said, I've been diagnosed and you basically saved my life. And this oh, stuff wow. I didn't do. That is but I didn't bump. Bump. Yeah. I don't know about you, Casey, bumps. but I'm like, gee, that is huge impact that you're having. Yeah. I mean, this is this is massive. It's why we wanted you to be our, our first guest. That feeling that I sense your sense of freedom. You've jumped over and leaped forward. What does freedom look and sound and feel like for someone who's managing their neurodiversity? Quite often people say avoid labels, avoid medication, there's other ways. This is very unhelpful in the neurodiverse world specifically. So when you have that diagnosis or label, if you want to put it cynically, you actually can put a step forward and have the backing of, you know, a psychiatrist, a psychotherapist, the NHS eventually when they hear that and see the reports. So once you've got that mandate, you have that clarity and you have that sense of understanding, you can then go forward and be really explicit with your, well, certainly at work, definitely talk to the HR team. And then at home, we'll start with your nearest and dearest to start. Not everyone's sharing looks like mine. I'm, I've had quite a lot of people get in touch saying, hi, I have um, ADHD or suspected ADHD or autism, or, um, which is something I closely relate with, by the way, um, and anxiety and depression, but I'm an introvert and I can't do that. It's like we haven't all got to play the same role. So freedom doesn't look like what I'm doing. What I'm doing is just playing my role, what feels right to me. Sounds like you, luckily, Jack, had an overall pretty positive experience. Um, how was that? Was everyone pretty receptive to it? When I was diagnosed three years ago, it was a complete car crash because so they yeah. were definitely up because they wanted to get me help and I love those people for forever it's lucky I guess because I have been in the world where they don't give a damn about that stuff yeah. and that probably an age thing as well not just the, the industry but look I have been lucky I also have an amazing wife Liz I've been with you know and she really is a saint a lot of people say to me as a lot of people say to her and me how does she cope we've learned to turn that into our strength because as we now recognize uh, how much together how much I contribute to this family and how much happiness and joy I've brought. It takes somebody to appreciate either way and it, we have to work at that together. So it's been, we're now talking about it together and want to share that as a couple so that people can understand how that works as well. Well, this is really good. And I still feel like a baby in this space. There's so many people <laughs> um, that I know on LinkedIn now who are just already 10 miles ahead of me. Um, I've just been, I'm just going to drop in here a little clang. But what I'm did I say to you about? Branding yourself and hyping exactly. yourself. Exactly. The title, I guess, is Global Co-Lead because I'm working with an amazing woman called Irene at work oh, no. uh, who is already in that position. Came to me after oh, a month of being there. so and awesome. And now they got me through. But it's something that, again, you know, like the two other charities I'm ambassador for in NABS and this can happen as well, you know. It's, yeah. Um, it's something I'm really honoured to be a part of, but um, it's not really the title or the names or these things that it's matter the to actions. me. It's, it's the action. Yeah. It's the it's action. It's your passion as well. Now, Jack, exactly. we have something that we we do when we celebrate our personal wins at the digital voice and we call it <laughs> snaps so we love to take a moment and i don't know if it's coming across I my mic but we do snaps to celebrate all of our personal wins so <laughs> the thing we're insane i know i know that's just what we do though and maybe we are but um yeah so i appreciate that, that <laughs> thank you for the snaps of you're welcome you mentioned family and it's that family and work there's two important aspects that really influence how how successful it can be to manage neurodiversity. I love these sessions for inspiring people to put in place actions. Mm. And I want to know, Jack, how do we create a new norm at work for neurodiverse people? How do we Ooh. do it? Yahoo is so forward thinking and not every workplace is. And Yahoo has employment resource groups covering a multitude of different areas of culture and um, disability and all 
about inclusion. So I recognize that not all workplaces are that understanding or up to date yet or are still box ticking. Um, yeah. And so one ways we can do that is um, once you have your diagnosis, there's a real win behind your back. You can start having that strength to say to HR, this is what I actually need. And maybe others in the company have the same issue. and Maybe we need to help them. We got a car recently uh, from the guys at Robinson Day. I noticed the sales exec had a Rubik's Cube fidget toy on his desk. Ooh. I asked him about it. He came out and said, yeah, I've got ADHD. My boss is super understanding of it. And now this is the reality I wanted 20 years ago. But look at that. That's amazing. So I put Callum up on LinkedIn, shouted about him and his boss. This is what we need. Start with the personal adjustments. Start with the self-regulation. Start taking in something that helps you keep your hands busy. That's why I always do keep your hands busy hashtag on a Sunday night on LinkedIn. Fidget toys for adults, not, not just for kids. Yeah. You know, so start with your own self-regulation. Then start the advances. We're moving into an area where we're going to create sensory rooms at Yahoo, um, wow. where essentially, you know, some people's silence is deafening. And yeah. Some people silence is a necessary critical environment. So yeah, you, ha you have to expect both sides. For me, silence is actually impossible environment to work. Yeah, that's how know? I am as well, Jack. But for some others, that's it can be really distracting having any noise. Yeah. So, um, but for me, it can be an anxiety. I can have an anxiety attack if I don't if it's silent. Too that's quiet. How yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why we have to create sensory rooms to be sympathetic to a multitude. These are just some simple throwaway ideas. Start with yourself, and then if your company's up for it, maybe you could champion that. That is fantastic. And that's wonderful that Yahoo's embracing it and pushing boundaries there in terms of companies that are actively doing something about that. And a really common misconception that when we spoke last, Jack, you rightly so mm. pointed out, people often confuse or not confuse, but just mm. don't understand the differences between mental health and neurodiversity neurodiversity has often been bundled in with a mental health group but where i would differentiate in some areas is that you know and to be respectful to a pure mental health um, group as well a neurodiversity generally diagnosed um uh, attributed to the diagnosed labels of things like adhd um, ocd um, dyspraxia autism you know these are um if you like disorders they're potentially developmental disorders they are um, conditions if people don't like the word disorder but essentially they're incurable they are the state of the mind it's um how the mind grew physically uh, or developed and this is something that can't be counseled or CBT'd away necessarily. Those symptoms can be alleviated through those things. But um, I always talk about um, my wife, Liz. Again, we talk about this in, in our world now because it's helpful to share. She's a neurotypical. She had a really severe anxiety issue about five years ago. The NHS were wonderful with her. They correctly diagnosed this. So they gave her antidepressants to cure that and our, she just announced about six months ago oh by the way i stopped taking my antidepressants a little while ago and I, she doesn't have the issues she had and and it's that's amazing, amazing. That, that, yeah that's a great story and so i try to for, for in the spirit of balance i try to share those stories but for me taking antidepressants was a nightmare it caused way more mania way more problems way more impulse issues so we have to sometimes separate the two anxiety and depression can come as a result of neurodiverse conditions but it's not quite the same so i think we should have a group and a space of people who are suffering from acute mental health issues that may be caused by bereavement or job loss or financial yeah. issues and neurodiversity is almost like a separate thing for hidden disabilities potentially in my mind someone out there may be shouting down the computer right now going you're wrong with this x y and z but so far this is what i understand you have your foot in the neurodiversity camp as, camp as a champion of that but you also champion men's mental health uh it's something quite close to my heart i have a son and a daughter and i've I'm, i've worked with and have co-founded a lot of female groups within the community and within our industry but i'm also uh, founded digital industry lads and ladies and we found mm. over lockdown that we were like putting more emphasis on men you need a community you need to be part of that i wanted to know from you jack if you could share one message for the future generation of young men or any men listening out there um, about mental health what would it be picture i get i don't know about this word, toxic masculinity phrase uh, potentially i wrestled with it a, a lot over the years i think um it's difficult so what i was focused on is really what i think um, can really damage men and various environments all the way through yeah huge maybe potentially big muscles strong personality really aggressive whatever it is 
but yet crumbling on the inside. Um, and I think there's a degree of the more I try and work on my bravado and alpha, and they're actually to the degree of how damaged their potential is inside. Um, and actually a real, someone who's really sh- sure of themselves probably doesn't need to put on that show, right? We know that. Yeah. But that's why it's so important. No people have t- taken their own lives. I know um, uh, people who are still suffering hard, you know, and driving themselves into the ground because they cannot give up that show because they probably had that drilling to them when they were young. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's important. Yeah. I think it really is. And as you Very. said, there is well, our industry especially has been sadly touched by male suicide way too much. So I want to wrap up actually and we're going to come on to something a bit lighter to finish. Mm. But this is mm. this is really important, Jack. I want to know if you could share some resources with our listeners. Um the Ooh, yes. great organizations you could work with, outlets that are out there for people if they've got more questions, want to be educate, or just need help themselves, where do they go? Yeah. I went to so many resources. I went to counsellors, like through the yellow pages, went to whoever I needed. And like, first things first is talk to someone you trust, You're not someone who's just going to go, ah, it's fine. You know, like talk to someone who really listens and loves you and understands you. Talk to your doctor, get several opinions, you know. Um, don't just give up because... I was given the wrong. So I think that my journey is what I'm telling you here. So that will help people. The one thing we don't have a lot of us ADHD is, is, is a lot of patience and, yeah. you know, yeah. like st- stamina with these things. It's like, come on, get to the point. That yeah. took me years. So if you don't get the help and antidepressants didn't work, maybe then it's time to seek out a psychiatrist. That can be quite expensive. But what I would say is invest in your mind because it's really yeah. the start of everything. So it's like, so doctor, psychiatrist, um, if you believe in you us and someone you love. But then the um, charities and resources, I think, if you're in media like we are, we are NAB, used to be, Julia, yeah, NABS, one. Yeah. go to NABS, you know, they help you with a variety of things. Look up This Can Happen. It's an okay. amazing movement um, run by Archie and Zoe Sinclair. I'm one of the ambassadors there. Amazing team across, not just media, by the way, that's all, workplace mental health champions in all variety of industries. So check those out. And personally, on the ADHD one, I really enjoy I Have ADHD podcast with Kristen Carter. Kristen Carter. Lovely. Nice. Brilliant. But those are four great resources. And thank you so much. Thank but, you. Casey, well, I'm going to have some fun with Jack now. We do, We normally do. We oh, either do. Uh, as this is going to be the secret <laughs> service round. You've got one minute. Brace yourself, fire, Jack. <laughs> quick fire question. You have two seconds to answer each question. Are you ready, Jack Ellis? Oh, no. I hate this. Anxiety. <laughs> I'll do my best. <laughs> I try to be very good care of you. Here we go. Three. Two, one. Which game show featured the animated golden robot called Mr. Chips? Oh, catchphrase. Correct. Oh. If you had to change your first name, what would you change it to? Oh, no. Rumpelstiltskin. How bad? <laughs> oh, I'm going to throw curveballs in here. Who's going to buy who this year in our industry? Oh, oh my God. Uh, Apple's going to buy everyone. I love it. Yeah. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Another silly question. What is a good spy code name for you? I'll be I'd be um O seven O because I get the numbers all mixed up. Love it. This is the year of complete that statement. Neuro inclusion. Is that a buzzword? It. No, it's not. It's well, it's one that should be it should be that. What has been your favorite age so far? <laughs> it is this one. I'm gonna say this one right now. Right now, right here, right now. Brilliant. Right here. Love Person that. in our industry, Jack, who most inspires you? Um, Jim Holder, uh, who's chief editor over at Haymarket Automobiles. So, like, yeah. he is. I've worked in the car advertising world a long time. So many egos, so much bravado, all the things we talked about. Jim is one of the nicest, humblest, but most knowledgeable, excellent people I know. Lovely. Worthy of a shout out. Wonderful. Number eight. Mm. Here we go. What item is worth spending more money on? He recently got one of those above ground pools in the garden. So I'm no. buying all Look the accessories. All in this heat it. wave, couldn't have picked all up the time. I'm Here's going the... over the top. <laughs> <laughs> What's your hidden talent? Oh, my God. Um, I think it's become more hidden, but I'm a bit of a musician. I used to write songs. Ah, so I used to oh. a bit on LinkedIn back in the pandemic. I was doing a few Oasis covers. Oh, if I'd known that, I'd have said, they would sing me your first line of your favourite song, but I haven't got that one here. <laughs> Ready, finish this phrase. The way to my heart is... Food. <laughs> Last three questions. Here we go. What area of ad tech is on the up and up? So now the cookie's been pushed back and identities at the fore. It is, it is the platforms. I'm not, I'm not just saying that because I work for one... But I think the world is getting sucked into platforms and I think it's becoming making life a lot easier for people. Brilliant. Thank you. Last two. What never fails to make you laugh? 
cat videos. <laughs> oh, so true. I watched them this morning. I before this podcast, I sat in my kids, showed them my latest favorite TikToks. There are some hilarious ones. Finally, your biggest tip for achieving good mental health: keep busy. I think is the short one. I think always have something in your mind. Keep mindful, not just mindfulness, but mindful of things that make you happy and keep you busy. Don't stop and dwell for too long all the time. It's good to reflect, but also get up and go again. Brilliant. And get a dog. Jack, get a dog. And get a dog. <laughs> Kate, yeah. going to agree with that. I've you? just done it. I've got Ange at home. And even if she wakes me up at 4.30 in the morning, there's a lot of love oh. and she definitely keeps me busy. Oh, bless. And has been named Good Vibe Director at the Digital Voice. So that's how we're picked <laughs> up people that. over here. Thank you. Jack Ellis from Yahoo, you have been amazing. Thank you from me. Oh, Our first guest. We get some snaps for that. Thank Our first you. guest. Any snaps? Snap for <laughs> first guest. Yes. <laughs> I've got a big shout out to producer Kalia in the background who's working her magic Thank behind you. this. Thanks, We're Kalia. excited to share this. Thank you, everybody involved. Pleasure. Thank you so much, Thank guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Jack Ellis. and you have been listening to another episode of Off Record On Point with the Digital Voice Podcast Unzipped. And it's a goodbye from me, Julia Linehan. From me, Casey Long. From me, producer, Kalia Bellamy. You can still stay connected with us after this episode. Join us, follow us, love us across all the social platforms. Just look out for the Digital Voice. See you on the next episode of Off Record On Point, the Digital Voice Podcast Unzipped.